In a dramatic showdown within the U.S. Senate, a bipartisan coalition overcomes deep Republican divisions and pressures from former President Trump to push a $95 billion aid package for Ukraine and Israel toward passage. This report will cover events up to the current moment. Stay tuned to Radio AI for more updates on this developing story. After that, we will pass the ball over to reporter Harrison Carter for elaboration and comment. Following that, we will distill the comments and opinions from over 1,000 listeners and provide you with the most relevant comments for your enjoyment. Next, we will have the esteemed retired judge, Judgey Judgerston, weigh in on the matter to provide a balanced, well-thought-out perspective. And now, Mr. Harrison Carter. In the high-stakes arena of Washington, D.C., a gripping narrative unfolds as the Senate stands on the cusp of a historic decision. Amidst a backdrop of international turmoil and domestic discord, a $95 billion aid package for Ukraine and Israel teeters on the edge of approval. The drama intensifies as the Republican Party is torn asunder, with factions clashing over the direction of their allegiance and the future of foreign policy. At the heart of this political thriller is a group of Republican senators who, defying the stern pressures from their party's right wing and the formidable shadow of former President Donald J. Trump, choose to stand with their Democratic counterparts. This unlikely alliance propels the legislation towards a climactic final vote, overcoming the last of its obstacles by a decisive 66 to 33 margin. The coalition's victory is a testament to the complexities of governance, where convictions often collide with political expediency. J.D. Vance, amidst the tumultuous debate over the foreign aid package, has positioned himself as a staunch defender of what he perceives as President Trump's policy legacy, despite Trump no longer holding office. Vance's vocal criticism of the legislation, suggesting it aims to thwart Trump's potential future decisions regarding Ukraine, underscores his alignment with Trump's viewpoint and the broader ideological rift within the Republican Party. His actions reflect a deeper political strategy, intertwining his stance with the loyalty to Trump's base while igniting discussions on the direction and priorities of the party's foreign policy. The stakes are monumental, with $60.1 billion earmarked to support Ukraine in its valiant struggle against a Russian onslaught and an additional $14.1 billion destined to aid Israel in its conflict with Hamas. Nearly $10 billion is allocated for humanitarian relief in war-torn regions, highlighting the dire needs of civilians caught in the crossfire. As the saga unfolds, protagonists emerge. Senators who dare to defy the prevailing winds of their party, advocating for the strategic importance of supporting allies and championing democratic principles abroad. Their resolve is tested by vehement opposition from within their ranks, where detractors argue that national security begins at home and any foreign aid should be contingent on addressing the surge of migrants at the U.S. border. The tension reaches a boiling point with stark warnings from leaders on both sides. Democrats caution that a failure to act could embolden adversaries and betray global democratic ideals, while Republicans grapple with the implications of their decisions on the party's identity and America's role on the world stage. In this charged atmosphere, the narrative is more than a mere legislative process. It's a battle for the soul of American foreign policy, a reflection on the values that define a nation, and a poignant reminder of the global responsibilities that come with power. As the final vote looms, the world watches, waiting to see how the United States will navigate these turbulent waters, in a story where the lines between duty, loyalty, and morality are blurred. And now, here are the actual comments and opinions, curated from over 1,000 submissions. This is how America really feels. Is J.D. Vance actually insane? He's complaining that Congress is trying to stop President Trump's agenda. Trump is not the president. He's not even the Republican nominee for president yet. These hypocrites talk incessantly about the people's house, but they never do the people's work. Shameful. Finally, some Republicans are prioritizing the American national interest over Donald Trump. Hopefully, the pressure on the House will suffice and they'll let a vote on the issue. Democracy and free world aren't a given. They must be fought for. Lindsey Graham is an embarrassment to this country and himself. Has he no honor at all? 
Graham is nothing more than the worst sort of charlatan these days. He walks, he talks, and he crawls on his belly to whatever music his Pied Piper is playing. He could have been pushing through that bipartisan bill, but he is playing his hyperpartisan game instead. For shame. Considering the former president's opinions that foreign policy is best applied as naked extortion, while NATO is dissolved to make Russian aggression easier, do we really need any more proof that his clown show will be back, bigger than ever, ready to make up for lost time? Today is Lincoln's birthday. Let's honor him by fighting for our republic that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. An unelected guy facing 91 felonies is calling these shots for a third of our government, more if you include the court. He will use that power to scuttle this bill. If Ukrainians have to die and lose their country to advance Trump's political ambition, Republicans appear happy to let that happen. Excuse me, Senator Vance. He is the former president. And neither of you are wearing any clothes. Wake up from your fairy tale. It's hard to believe your mind has closed so quickly once you obtained some tangible power and fame. Do you even remember the day you sold out? The supplemental represents an attempt by the foreign policy blob Deep State to stop President Trump from pursuing his desired policy. Senator J.D. Vance, Republican of Ohio, wrote in a memo to his colleagues. What a sad spectacle. Congratulations to the wise senators who know their history. So the hard-right Republicans now say they won't vote for this bill because there are no provisions for border security. And these were the same Republicans who voted against a previous version of the bill because it did have provisions for border security. Now I really understand why they love the uneducated, low-information voters. Donald Trump is not an elected official and has no expertise in foreign affairs. The only thing he knows about national security is how to steal the documents. Serious question. What on earth is J.D. Vance talking about? There is presently no Trump administration, no Trump policy priorities, no attempt to impeach him, again. The man is not president. Stop treating him like he is. Also, mainstream media, please point out over and over again that most of the aid to Ukraine will actually be going to U.S. defense contractors. Pass the legislation. It's much cheaper than spending trillions later on to stop Putin if he takes Ukraine. Supporting Ukraine is critical. Showing some even-handedness in the Middle East is as well. It wouldn't hurt to add in something on the border and take that talking point away from Trump and Republicans. The Democrats and Biden have the potential here to do themselves a world of good. Here's hoping they take advantage of it. Good. Now let's see that same faction publicly denounce Donald Trump and get back on the path to reason and sanity. Very interesting. Perhaps we are finally seeing some Republicans stand up to Trump and his bootlickers. Maybe even the first sign of the inevitable breaking up of the party of Trump. Graham isn't going to the conference in Europe because he doesn't dare face our allies after cravenly undermining them. He and Vance should be ashamed of themselves for caving to Trump and spouting nonsense about the border after voting against their party's own bill last week. How do these people face themselves in the mirror? Trump has no policy guiding his bloviation. He's trying to stay out of jail by getting elected. What excuse do Graham and Vance have for their vileness? I'd say this to Lindsey Graham if I could. You have betrayed everything you ever said to John McCain you stood for in national security. The late great senator would roll over in his grave if could see your actions here. And for you to ally with Trump in anything after what how he maligned your good friend. Shame, sir. When will the U.S. investigate how deep Russia has infiltrated the GOP? The GOP's traitorous tactics are on full display. How embarrassing for Ohio to be stuck with a Trump puppet senator ranting about the deep state while simultaneously promoting a shadow government. J.D. Vance exploited stereotypes of Kentucky hillbillies to sell a book about his family. He is an opportunist. There is nothing wrong with taking advantage of opportunity as long as you have some ethics and principles. That is to say, don't jump from blaming Appalachian hillbillies for their poverty alcoholism and drug addiction on their poor education, and even poorer work ethics to blaming Democrats for the plight of the hillbillies because blaming hillbillies was profitable until blaming Democrats became more profitable. But that's J.D. Vance. Some pretty strong views presented. I thank our viewers and listeners for their comments. Well, folks, you have heard from the man in the street. Now let's hear the opinion of our resident expert on democracy, 
the Honorable Judgey Judgerston. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Redwell. When I was a kid, I used to watch Batman on TV, the original series. It was great. Only lasted two seasons. I collected Batman cards. In fact, I ended up with over a thousand. Great fun. I'm sure one day my parents cleaned the attic and threw them out, like 99% of parents did back in the day. How were we to know that today, an original Batman card might be worth $5,000? Had I valued my childhood playthings, I could have kept them and ended up with a nice nest egg. That's an interesting anecdote, Your Honor. But what has it got to do with today's topic? Raidwell, the central theme of today's show is that it is only after the passage of time that we sometimes realize the true value of something, especially if you lose something of great value. When I was a kid, I had loads of fun collecting Batman cards. They were an important part of my childhood play days. But after a while, like any kid, I set them aside and never thought about them again, until years later when I realized they were gone. At that point, their value increased in my mind, since they were now gone forever. Now they are almost priceless to collectors that have them. Kind of like democracy. I never thought about it much growing up. But lately I think about it all the time. Because we are losing it. We are losing our democracy to a growing group of right-wing cultists intent on installing Donald Trump as dictator. I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared, wasn't deeply afraid. Because I am. I learned a whole lot about life when I once read a label on a can of rat poison. It said if you see one rat, there are probably ten. If you see ten, there are probably five hundred in the area. And that is the way it is with corrupt Republicans. Only a few appear to be rotten, but that number is growing. And there are a lot more than we know. What we see are just the first few initial rats. There are plenty more lurking in the shadows. We are in the middle of an unofficial civil war, folks. There is democracy and truth on one side, and the corrupt Republican cult on the other. I am not going to defend my allegations. If you are an intelligent, well-read American... You can't help but know exactly what I mean. It is all around us. The problem is that too many of us live in denial. We have taken democracy for granted for so long we assume it will always be here, like the daily rising sun. We are comfortable, complacent, and could lose everything in a few short months. When I look back at my Batman card collecting days, it wasn't the cards that made me happy, joyful, and thrilled to be alive. It was a combination of things. The fact that I had a good sleep the night before. I had a roof over my head. That morning I enjoyed a nutritious breakfast. I played outside in the safety of my neighborhood, with all my terrific friends. What really gave my childhood value was that I was free. Free from the sounds and threats of gunfire. Free from suppression by a military fascist state. Free to go about my life in the pursuit of happiness. We have already lost the right for women to control their own bodies. The Supreme Court is corrupt as hell. Justice Thomas, in my view, should be impeached and an investigation launched into his behaviors. All Republican members who contributed to the insurrection should meet justice. If Donald Trump is ever convicted of treason, which I truly believe in my own opinion and estimation, he will one day be faced with treason charges. If convicted, he will hang. Just project into the future. What would all those corrupt politicians feel when the orange Jesus swings from the gallows? Think about it. In all fairness, he would have to be convicted in a criminal court by his peers. But if he is eventually convicted of treason, which he likely would if he was found to have sold secrets to a foreign power, and it came back to bite us. So in my mind, it is a real possibility. It is also possible that Trump gets elected, and we do fall into fascism. NATO would be disbanded. Putin would take over Europe. America billionaires would forfeit all their wealth to Trump. Don't believe it? Trump already announced he would do it. There is a nightmare scenario playing out before us, and we must all act now to stop it from dragging us all into it.